BitWit's coverage of Computex 2019 is brought to you by Fantex, Cooler Master, Gigabyte, Enermax, Team Group, NZXT, and Corsair. To learn more about our sponsors, click on the links below. I'm he here. made it! I'm here. All right, the day can continue. Onward! We're back in Nam Gang! Hey, Kyle! Hey, hey, hey! Whoa! Wait, Hello! Wait, wait, wait. Hi! Hi! Uh... What's up? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be kidding me, dude. Wait, seriously? Yes. What? Why? Because you're what, awesome. What is I'm this? A big fan. I'm a big Why is dude? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Here, let's shake hands through the picture. Okay, okay. Just shake the picture. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. I will hang this above our fireplace. Awesome. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen because it's me. Because <laughs> you know I'm awesome. Chris, I think it's time we take it to the max. Yeah. Enter. The max. You, you beat me to the punchline. Oh. Starting with the ETS T50. This is a very nice air cooler with a, a white and black option. And you can see we've got addressable RGB, very rainbowy. Uh, nice, pretty sizable heat sink here, actually. It looks like we've got about five heat pipes. And this, it looks like it's a dual fan design at first, but if you look, it's actually sort of like a little vent that you can turn to direct airflow in a particular direction, which is kind of, which is kind of cool. If you wanted to aim it, you know, maybe more closely to a, a certain exhaust area of your case, a bit of flexibility there. I wonder how effective that is, but uh, kind of an interesting idea. We also have the ETS T50 Axe. Uh, no relation to the men's body spray, but this is sort of a blacked out stealth cooler, which I actually really like. Looks very cool and, uh, uh, and sort of discreet. Um, no RGB whatsoever, but that's cool. But that's okay because there's plenty of RGB over here. They have these new square RGB fans, which is really kind of disorienting at first. It looks like they're actual square fans, but that's really just the RGB design that's going around the perimeter of the fans. If I stop it, you can see it's still a regular circular fan, but uh, kind of a, an interesting take on it. Addressable RGB, of course. We have white and black options, 120s, uh, 140s, and even 200. The 200 millimeter one looks the weirdest. I don't know, it's freaking me out. This is kind of what the fans look like from the sides. These fans are also plug and play, so you don't necessarily need a motherboard that supports uh, addressable RGB in order to get it to do this, this kind of fun rainbow design. Uh, we also have uh, a backside. This is what the backside of the fans look like. They get a little mirror demoed here. So uh, if you install these, let's say at the front of your case as intakes, uh, you're, you're not completely in the dark from the other side. You can still kind of get a nice little weird dotted effect. This looks pretty cool. We also have the TB RGB. This is a circular fan, a bit more traditional, addressable RGB, of course. It does give you the option, however, unlike uh, unlike the square RGB fans, to connect it directly via SATA to your power supply if you wanted uh, to take advantage of the fixed 1200 RPM. This is the Revolution RGB 80 plus gold certified power supply. It looks like it is fully modular and it's got nice black flat cables that come included. Uh, I really like the RGB effect here. You know, if you can actually find a place for, for your power supply to be shown off uh, relatively well, this is actually a pretty good implementation of RGB. It's very nice and uh, even lighting, no hot spots whatsoever. Kind of has like a frosted blade look. It's kind of hard to stop the fan blades to see what it looks like off, but uh, but there you go. There's also RGB effects on the side, which is gonna be a lot more visible, most likely, in the majority of cases than, uh, than the fan here. So uh, that actually looks pretty nice, pretty 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 classy. They haven't uh, overdone it with uh, a bunch of gaudy effects. We also have the Max Revo 1800 watt. This thing's an absolute animal of a power supply, 230 volts, uh, which, is, which means it's only gonna be usable in the EU for the most part, uh, because we're limited uh, to 220 volts in the US. But uh, they do have a 1600 watt version that's, I believe, 220 volts. If you are in the good old US of A. The nice thing about the fan that's included in the Max Revo is that it actually has the switch on the back, but if you press it, it actually pumps it up to 3000 RPM, and you can actually see just how effective the airflow is. And we have this little windmill here that's behind the unit, and you can see it's actually pumping out a ton of air. I mean, I could use this on a hot day. I could use this right now, actually. It's fully modular as well, 80 plus gold certified, and comes with a whopping 10 year warranty. Very, very well engineered, I'm sure. You guys remember the Enermax Equalance, right? Well, now they have a gold edition because gold's awesome. So this is actually a gold foil design and they're actually gonna be selling limited quantities of this. Okay, so they, they won the Japan BCN award uh, first place three years in a row for this case. So they decided to celebrate by having Japanese Kanazawa craftsmen uh, actually implement this kind of fun modification. If you're really into gold, if you're, if you're a gold member or something like that, this is definitely the case for you. Next, we have the FlexCrate FC30. These cases are interesting. They have these sort of modular panels that light up that you can uh, actually take out. I, I don't know how to, how to pop them out, but uh, you can replace them. They're, they're modular and they actually come with uh, this one by default, this guy right here. Okay, so this is a bit more standard. You know, I don't, I don't know many of my friends who would be uh, into 
into this one. What is that, like Wii Fit Trainer or something? It's a pretty interesting concept, though. It's going to be really nice for OEMs who want to actually trick out these uh, chassis to their heart's content and sort of brand them in their own way. We also have a look at the internal layout here, full ATX support, plenty of radiator options. I mean, you got a 360 at the front there. It looks like you, you can also do uh, potentially a 240 or maybe even a 2. 80. Yeah, you can do a 280 up here too. That's pretty nice. Power supply shroud as well as addressable RGB. Pretty much completes the whole package. Uh, these are going to be relatively affordable at uh, the $60 price range, I believe they said. So uh, definitely more entry level. Uh, if you want even more entry level, I think for like 10 bucks less or so, you can get one of these guys. These are the uh, LL30. So this is the Leonids. Leonids and the Liblusion. Uh, they're, they're really getting funky and creative with the, uh, with the names this year. Uh, so there they are. They're pretty much the exact same case, just different front panel uh, designs. Looks like this one's getting airflow mostly from the top and the bottom. These are very thin openings. I wouldn't count on much air getting through that. But uh, this one has more of a direct airflow path right here. So I, I think whatever fans mounted right here would be doing the most damage in terms of uh, intake. Looks like we've got three fans at the front there. Looks like you can support a 360 millimeter radiator. And then perhaps my favorite case that they're showing off today is the Sabre Ray Advance. This is building upon the original Sabre Ray. This is Edermac's flagship case and for good reason. Uh, it's, it's pretty fantastic looking, you know, has a really nice aesthetic, very flexible options here. You can actually remove this uh, acrylic plate and replace it with a uh, mesh one. Now, they actually have a mesh one up here. Uh, it comes included with two mesh plates, so you could do mesh on the top and the front simultaneously if you wanted to, completely included. There's also a cool little, uh, little screen here. Obviously, my, my, my shutter speed's messing things up for you, but uh, if you wanted to get a quick look at system diagnostics uh, and you have an ASUS motherboard that uh, has the supported node, you can actually get a readout right there on your front panel, which is pretty handy. USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C is under one of these. Oh, there it is. There it is right there. Uh, plenty of USB 3, nice I.O., fan control, blah, blah, blah. We also have a toolless removal, very easy to remove side panel, just goes out like that. Very nice, actually. Comes in and out quickly and easily, that's what she said. We also have the square fans. I believe these come included with the Sabre Ray Advance as opposed to the more circular ones with the original design, white. This is just a lot of white stuff, all right? I'm not trying to be racist. There's a lot of white. Okay, this is their new Marble Shell MS. 30 white. Okay, they have a black one too, uh, but this is the white one. Very interesting design. Okay, there's actually quite a bit of airflow between these gaps, but I'm not getting so much here. Be very interested to see how this all performs uh, airflow wise. I believe this is a relatively entry level case though. About $50 is, is what they said, if I remember correctly. Oh, they were really st stepping up with the radio options 240 or 280 at the top, and looks like a 360 is capable of fitting at the front. Nice power supply shroud. Got a nice opening here for your RGB power supply. A couple SSD mounting trays right there on the shroud as well. Here's the white version of the Sabre Ray, not the advanced, so you are going to miss out on a couple features, including the uh, toolless removal side panel there, but uh, still looks very nice in white indeed. We also have a white version of the Flex Crate 3.0, and this is uh, looks a little bit girly with this uh, flower panel. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe Wifey Sauce would like it, but uh, maybe not for me. But still, uh, looks very nice in white. Kind of goes, carries on through the interior as well. They've got a white uh, power supply shroud, and it looks like the motherboard tray is white as well, which is a good choice. If you're going to make a white case, this is my opinion, if you're going to make a white case, make the inside white too. Otherwise, it's only half white. Pretty good water cooling options for a, for a case at this price point, actually. Not too shabby. Revolution RGB power supply that we just took a look at earlier is also available in white. I particularly like white components when, when addressable RGB is involved, just because it's a bit more reflective of the light. I, I feel like it shows it off better as opposed to black, which can kind of mask it, uh, but this looks very nice. You can see this is fully modular as well and a 750 watt unit. I believe they're gonna start with 750 watts uh, on the market and they might scale up or down depending on how well these sell. Uh, we also have a couple liquid coolers, a Liquitec 2, 360 millimeter in white. These are previously only available in black, but now you get an additional 120 millimeter fan for extra heat dissipation and cooling. And this is their Aquafusion coolers that are also available in white, uh, but these can come in a 120 or 240 millimeter variant for your radiator. I particularly like the uh, water blocks here, the LED implementation here. Looks very cool, it's very unique, doesn't look overly done, and looks fairly high quality. Good job, Edermax. This is one of their brand new cases here, the IC Gems IG50. Uh, this is actually a very unique design. It has two 200 millimeter fans. They're addressable RGB right at the front of the case. You can see we have ventilation that goes around the perimeter of the front panel. I'd be interested to test that out. Looks like we also have a tinted side panel window, plenty of water cooling and radiator support because this is a full tower case. Although it seems to be, at least from here, like it looks like it's a relatively small full tower, but when you look inside, there's actually tons of, tons of room for activities. They've got uh, two more large 
large 200 millimeter fans up top there with uh, plenty of other options. You could swap that out for uh, a 360 millimeter radiator. You could actually have two of them installed simultaneously. There's also room for a 140 at the back. Uh, and additionally, vertical GPU mounting is natively supported. I think you might have to buy that PCI Express ribbon cable separately, however. Here's a quick look at the marble shell in black. They actually have two variants, the MS-20 and the MS-30. The main difference is being micro ATX and full ATX support. Here we have the LickMax 3 Performance 120 millimeter radiator and fan. You can see there's no RGB on the actual fan, just on the water block itself, uh, but it's very high quality, very familiar design that we've seen from them in the past. I particularly like the way this looks, as long as there's no fingerprints on it. This is a convention though, so there's going to be. Uh, we also have this one, which is the RGB version. <laughs> it's literally just the same cooler, but has an RGB fan, still RGB water block. And then over here we have addressable RGB because uh, they know, they know, they know that uh, addressable RGB is very popular in the US market, despite uh, sometimes uh, addressable RGB products not always being the best for cooling. Um, people, people don't seem to care. They keep flying off the shelves, so uh, Animax is gonna continue making products that people are buying. We also have the LickMax 3 Tough Edition featuring addressable RGB fans once again. They've, of course, partnered with Asus on this one and that same classic design that we all know and love. The nice thing about all these coolers is, is that they're featuring a very cool pump design that they've been using for a while now, but uh, they actually have a dual chamber design here. So you can see they actually have the pump located above uh, the channel where the water would flow through. So the water goes directly down and it hits the hottest part of your CPU first uh, for maximum heat dissipation before going into the pump and recirculating. It also kind of separates the hottest part of the CPU, the hottest part of the liquid from the pump itself so that it actually increases the lifespan and longevity of the pump. Uh, we also have the Liquitech 2 available in 240, 280, and 360 millimeter variants. Uh, very popular cooler. I actually have a 240 millimeter one installed in my uh, in one of my one of my workstation builds and it's uh, it's still it's still going it's still going strong. And then finally for coolers we have the Liquitech 360 OC TR4 2 for Threadripper uh, socket TR4. Uh, CPUs. So uh, this thing is an absolute animal. It has a very large full cover water block and we have of course uh, these three fans, three 120s doing their thing. Obviously for TR4 it's good to have a sizable uh, water block and uh, sure enough they do. This also comes with an RGB controller as does the Liquitech 2 and of course you get those same lovely fans. No RGB on the fans which I, I can appreciate. 500 watt TDP. <gasps> now this is the last thing I expected to see at the Enermax booth is an electric bike. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. They, they've partnered up with a company called Jack Wolfskin to make the Max Wolf Hybrid 160. Okay, this is a, a pedal-assisted, it's pedal-assisted power, so there is a battery on board, but you do have to do some work. So as you pedal, uh, the battery will scale up and actually help you, uh, help propel you forward for assisted pedaling. And it actually is a sort of a compact design. It's much smaller than your average adult person bike. And uh, it looks like it can fold as well. So if you wanted to pack this up for travel or storage, take it camping, wherever, on the go. Perhaps the coolest thing about this bike, because I'm lazy, is that it's uh, VR integrated. So they actually have a VR demo over here. You can see that the wheels are actually on other wheels, so it kind of just treadmills in place. Uh, but you can actually tour around different parts of the world using an HMD VR headset. And on that note, the very last thing I'm gonna show you guys is more or less that same bike, but with a PC built straight into it. Typical Enermax, just putting PCs in things where they don't belong. Or does it belong perfectly? And this is the future. I think, I think we could all stand to do some extra computing on our morning commute to work. Look at that. What the hell's going on here? It's even liquid cooled. This is, this is ridiculous. I think they're trying to give Inwin a run for their money. Okay. Wow. That was a lot of cool stuff. Chris, you look, you look busy. We should probably go to the next booth. I'm down. <laughs> Let's do it.